Welcome. In Lesson 6, I'll be covering how to take dimensions from the model using snap points, which are named point locators in SDS2. I will also introduce an object called construction lines, which serves only one purpose, to create snappable intersecting points for dimensions, and in Erector Plus for the addition of model items such as members and materials. I will turn some members to solid on this floor, then rotate the view. From the display options and under the model pulldown, you have a tool called Show Dimensions. The dimensions shown are generated from the members or materials native shop drawings. The Show Dimensions from the display options will allow you to check to show either the member or material dimensions. I'll select the member dimensions. As I hover over the member, you will see the dimensions appear. In SDS2, you have the ability to isolate a member using the Isolate Member by Location tool. I will use the icon to launch this tool. Notice how you can see the dimensions here as well, rotating and zooming for a better inspection. OK brings me back to the entire model view. Now I will add the material show dimensions to the list and then hover over the Outrigger support plate. I will uncheck the member dimension and hover over the connection shear tab. Dimensions do not appear. There could be two reasons for this. First, if the part does not have a 2D drawing created, the dimension will not appear. The second is if you are hovering over a connection material, it is the connection component that is being selected. To select a connection material, set the filter to material. The show dimension from the model pulldown differs in that you will select the item's members and material. And once your selection is complete, right click and answer OK to the prompt. Now the dimensions will appear. Filters are not required for the connection material when selection is done after the run show dimension tool is selected. With this tool, the dimensions will stay until you run the clear dimension or exit the modeling window. Before I cover the ruler command, I'd like to point out how to determine the left or start end of a member in SDS2. The first method is the member's shipping mark or piece mark, which is always located at the member's left end. Next is when you hover over a member, you'll see a target which appears only at the member's left end. This allows you to determine which end you are looking at when in the member review screen. Using the ruler, I can take dimensions from point to point in the model. I will take the dimensions of the intermediate beams. When you right click on a field, you'll get the dimension inch value. The angle tab will show you the angle data from four selected points. If you select the same point four times, you'll clear the screens. You'll also see the X, Y, and Z of the global coordinate system. Note. With SDS2, the model global Z direction is always up and cannot be changed. When taking the dimension to see in the model the dimension indicated, you need to toggle on the Annotation Point Locator icon. As you have noticed, the dimension in the model disappears after you select the second point. Version 2017 will permit the model dimensions to not only remain, but will be savable and loadable.
For the next portion, I will surface the clip angle on this column, thus setting the working plane to the surface of the angle. I'm going to cover construction lines, point locator, and ruler. First, I'll talk about construction lines. Construction lines serve one purpose, and that is to create intersections for adding in members, materials, and taking dimensions. Construction lines created in the model will not appear in the 2D drawings. They can either be infinite in direction and in depth, or finite in direction and depth. They are profile specific, so if you add them in, others in the same project will not see them, but you can save them and then load them. They can be run from the model pull-down, right-click, shortcut key, or icon. That's good for starters. The rest will be demonstrated. I will add in an infinite construction line at the bolt column and a finite one on the bolt row. Using the point locators or snap point in the auto mode, I will add in the first point for the construction line and then set the construction line direction with the second auto point. This is a good time to describe the point locators. Along the top of the menu, you'll see the point locator icons that become enabled when a command that requires them is executed. Depending on the command, different icons will be enabled. When you hover your mouse over an icon, a description will appear. The magnet indicates the auto point, which functions like OSNAP and other CAD products, which activates several locators. With Auto on, you will also notice as I drag the mouse, the point name will be indicated. When you go to the Locate pull-down menu and you select the Help, you will get an in-depth description of each locator and how they function. The Construction Line command stays active until you escape or right-click Return. I will run the finite construction line command. SDS2 will remember the last first and second point that were used for the previous construction line add command. This functionality is typical for all applicable commands. For the first point, I will select the bolt using exact point and for the second directional point use perpendicular. Notice as I drag my mouse, the system will highlight the construction lines and direction view lines indicating which line this new construction line is to be perpendicular to. I'll select the last construction line that I added. When the second directional point used is a reference point, such as perpendicular or angle, an infinite construction line will be created. I'll repeat finite using exact point for the first and second point. Before using the ruler command, I'm going to add temporarily to my toolbar the coordinate system icon from the toolbar decorations command group. You can save this icon to your toolbar, but that will be another lesson. Now, I'll run ruler again, selecting with exact point for my first and my second point. In the table, we see 7 inches point to point, with an x dimension of 2 inches, and a y of 6 inches, and a z of 3 inches. These points may seem a bit strange. The 3 inches and the z, that makes sense, but the 7 and the 6 inches seem to be a bit off. This is because we are in 3D. When I took my dimension, the exact point is selected from the end of the member at the center of the column, and then take into the hole on the surface of the clip angle on the flange surface. Now I will take the dimension using intersection construction line point locator for the first and second points. This seems more accurate. This is because intersection construction line snaps to the working plane, which in this case is at the surface of the clip angle leg. The next modifier is named Z filter. I will add the Z filter tool from the miscellaneous command group to the toolbar.
When this tool is activated, the system prevents you from selecting points off of the working plane. The Z in this case is a screen coordinate system and not the global coordinates. Now, when I take a dimension using the exact point at the previous locations, we see that the ruler is locked to the working plane by the dimensions. I will determine the edge distance from the hole. For the second point, I will use vertex point, which will select polygon face intersections. One common mistake is to forget to turn the Z filter off when you're done. SDS2 has a very useful command called Add Construction Line to Material. I will use the icon to demonstrate this tool. When run, you select the material that you want to have the construction lines added around the perimeter and, in some materials like this angle, the K distance in the material standard gauge. When a material that has construction lines added by using this tool is selected again, with the tool, the construction lines for the selected material will be removed. Now I can verify my previous edge distances using intersection construction line point locators for the first and second point. There are several methods to erase construction lines. From the model pull down, or by using your filter, Let's just show how to change a color here. Your right click menu, but what I prefer to use is the shortcut key CS, which allows you to remove selected lines. You can also use CX, which erases all the construction lines. Now armed with the ability to take accurate dimensions from the model, please proceed to Lesson 7, Status Configuration.